Hello my dear friends, uh, this is Vipul Purohit and I welcome you once again to my YouTube channel. Now in this particular video, we are going to continue with the chemistry of uh, transition metals. If you remember, I have already uploaded the video of part 1. If you have missed out, then in the description box, I am going to give you the link. So please go through it so that the continuity is maintained. So in this part 2 of this transition metals, we try to understand over here that there is going to be a slight difference between D block elements and transition metals. In part 1 I told you that transition metals are D block elements. But then there is a fine line of difference between the two and what is that difference that is what we are going to look out in this particular video. Alright, so I am sure everybody are well prepared for this. Yes? Alright. So now, the basis of the differentiation between the transition elements and D block elements is nothing but electronic configuration. So, I am going electronic configuration of the first series of transition elements. In the periodic table, total there are three transition series, my dear friends, each comprising of 10 elements. So, 10, 10, 10. So, there is total 30 elements. Okay, so we are going to consider only the first series. Try to understand how they are going to be and then I will come to the fine line of difference which is there between the D block element and the transition element. So to begin with let us go into the basics of Pau's principle. I hope everybody knows this. Yes. So our first principle we have a sequence di of filling up of electrons in the respective orbitals. So the sequence is we start with 1s. Uske baad hai 2s, then we have got 2p, then 3s, then 3p, uske baad 4s, and then comes 3d. This is what the sequence is. Now you also know the maximum capacity of these orbitals. S ka capacity 2 hai, P ka capacity 6 hai, D ka capacity 10 hai, F ka capacity 14 hai. So let us try to arrange all this. Okay, so 1s 2, 2s 2, 2p 6, 3s 2, 3p 6. 4s2 stop. Yeah, but I'm stop karte. Now, agar aap ye pure total number of electrons count karo. So 2 and 2 is 4 and 10 and 12 and 18 and 20. Yani we are talking about elements up to atomic number 20. They are going to be either S block elements or P block elements. Because the last electron entering into whichever orbital that particular block that element belongs to. You know this very well. It's basics. So if the last electron enters into the S orbital, it's an S block element. If the last electron enters into the P orbital, so it's a P block element. Alright, so up to atomic number 20, the elements are either going to be S block or they are going to be P block. And when I talk about atomic number 20, so I'll be much more precise that I'm talking about calcium. So up to calcium, okay, the elements are this, S and P. But then, when we take, come to this particular chapter of transition metals, which is the most important orbital that we need to look out? Yes, the D orbital. So, have a look at the sequence very well. 4s2, okay, so that is 20. Now the 21st electron, we'll go to the next one. This is completely filled. So the 21st electron will go into what? 3D orbital and I will write it down as 3D1. Okay, and that is the meaning that the 21st element of the periodic table is actually the first D block element. Ikiswa jo element hai periodic table ka. Wo darasal D block element ka pehela element hai. It's the first D block element. Okay, so I guess this part is very clear to everyone. Up to 20, we are not going to consider the D block elements because as I told you, only the S and the P orbitals are getting filled up. So the 21st element, I'll tell you the name also of that and that is scandium. It's the first D block element of the periodic table. Alright, so this part is clear. I am very sure about it. Alright, we go to the next one is. As I was talking about, the main purpose of this particular video is to make you understand that what is that small difference between the transition elements and the D block elements. And then I'm going to explain you on the basis of the electronic configuration. So we are going to only consider the first series. Now, friends, I'm talking about series. So remember, we are going from left to right. Okay, then we will talk about series. So we call it as a row. 
all right and in a row you also know very well that there is an increase in the atomic number by one और अगर एटॉमिक नंबर एक से बढ़ता है तो ऑब्वियसली इलेक्ट्रॉन भी एक से बढ़ेगा और राइट सो आई विल बी गिविंग यू ऑल द एलिमेंट्स अलोंग विद द सिंबल एंड द एटॉमिक नंबर एंड द इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कॉन्फिगरेशन बट देन बिफोर आई स्टार्ट राइटिंग इट डाउन वन क्लेरिफिकेशन फ्रॉम माय साइड इज द इन द पीरियोडिक टेबल द एलिमेंट्स आर अरेंज्ड हॉरिजॉन्टली दैट मींस इन अ रो बट हियर ओके व्हेन आई एम गोइंग टू गिव यू ऑल दीस इंफॉर्मेशंस अबाउट दोस एलिमेंट्स सो आई एम गोइंग टू राइट डाउन वर्टिकली Okay, so this is a clarification. So please remember that the way I am writing is not the way they are arranged in the periodic table. I am writing it vertically, but then in the periodic table they are they are going to be arranged horizontally. All right. So we begin with the twenty-first element, as I said, that is going to be the starting element. So what I do is first is over here give a heading and that is name of the element. Then we go into its uh, symbol. Then we go into its atomic number, and then finally we go into its VACC, that is valence shell electronic configuration. All right. So this is what we are going to discuss over here. So the very first element is scandium. Okay, the symbol is SC, and the atomic number obviously is 21. Next comes is titanium. TI, the atomic number is 22. Next comes vanadium. V atomic number is twenty three. Next comes chromium. Cr atomic number is twenty four. Then comes manganese. Mn atomic number is twenty five. Then comes iron. Fe atomic number is twenty six. Next comes cobalt. Co atomic number twenty seven. Next is nickel. N I atomic number twenty eight. Next is copper. C U it is twenty nine. And the last one is zinc. Z N atomic number is thirty. So these are the ten elements because the capacity of the d orbital is ten. So obviously there are going to be ten elements over here. Okay. And now one very basic thing, and that is if you can just have a look. And the second column, and that is the symbol column, you will find that except vanadium, all the other elements have two alphabets. And the basic which I want you to understand, and that is, uh, whenever a particular element has got two alphabets, then the first one is capital, and the next one is small. Please be very careful with respect to cobalt. Because when we talk about with respect to cobalt, okay, the second alphabet that is O, please make sure it's small. If it is capital, it becomes carbon monoxide, and it's a molecule. And here, we cobalt is a single element. So please be very careful with that part. Okay, so this was just basics. Now we're going to valence shell electronic configuration. Valence shell means you know very well it is the outermost shell. So we begin with four S two is common everywhere. Now what happens is as one one electron goes on increasing because we are talking about horizontal in the periodic table. याद है ना मैंने आपको बोला था तो एक एक इलेक्ट्रॉन बढ़ता जाएगा तो वो एक एक जो इलेक्ट्रॉन बढ़ता जा रहा है वो जा रहा है किधर थ्री डी में जा रहा है बिकॉज द डी ऑर्बिटल हैज अ कैपेसिटी ऑफ टेन सो द थ्री डी ऑर्बिटल गेट्स प्रोग्रेसिवली फिल्ड अप विथ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स सो वी आर फोर एस टू थ्री डी वन सो We can continue now. I hope you have understood this. Now, what am I going to write down? 4s2, 3d2, 4s2, 3d3. Yes, 4s2, 3d4. All right, 4s2, 3d5, 4s2, 3d6, 4s2, 3d7, 4s2, 3d8, 4s2, 3d9, and then finally we have 4s2 and 3d10. Okay, this is what. The electronic configuration is so. As I say, the 4s is fixed, two electrons. The d orbital gets progressively filled up with electrons, and this is what the electronic configuration that you get. Okay. Yeah. So now the another important point is. Okay, I'm sure that is going on through your mind. So let me just clarify. I can read your minds now. Yes. All right. So the question which is going on through your mind is valence shell. का मतलब क्या होता है? Outermost shell. तो सबसे लास्ट शेल ऐसे भी बोल सकते हैं तो लास्ट शेल इज फोर तो फिर आपको ऐसा लगता रहेगा कि फोर फोर एस लिख के छोड़ देना है ना ये क्यों थ्री लिखा है व्हाई व्हाई देर आर टू ऑर्बिटल्स 
belonging to differentials. Okay, the d orbital is uh, if it had been say 4d, then all right. But so much may I both of them belong to the same last shell. Like in the last shell, the 4s, like in d orbital is the innermost shell, the second last shell, the white is being considered. I have give you the answer for this, and that is how will I give the answer to this? Is like uh, I give an example of a building. Okay, now every building has a staircase. I hope you agree with me very well. Okay, whatever the story of that building is, that building के कितने भी माले होने दो, वो building का हमेशा staircase होना जरूरी है। फिर चाहे वो तीन माले की building हो, जहाँ पर सिर्फ staircase है, या चाहे 25 माले की building हो, जहाँ पर staircase के साथ lift है। Okay, lift हो या नहीं है, वो हो सकता है, लेकिन staircase हमेशा होगा। So I'm going to give that example of a staircase. Now when you talk about a staircase, there are steps. Obviously, staircase से तो steps होना जरूरी है। Now have you ever noticed that if you have gone to various buildings, then you must have definitely noticed and that is the difference between the steps varies from one building to another building. Okay, in cases, some cases the distance, the difference is large. In some cases, the difference is less. Okay, yes, I'm very sure about it. Okay, what exactly happens in that is? I'm talking about stepping up. Upper jare hamlo. Niche nahi utar rahe. Yunki jab upar jayenge, to aapko malum hai, it's against gravity, so obviously we require more energy. Alright? So, what happens is, as we are going to step up, so, if suppose, I get, I take two cases now. Pahila case is, ke jahan par, the difference between the steps is going to be what? Large. So, if the difference between the steps is large, Okay, then what will happen is you are going to go step by step. Ek ek step hi apchad hoge. Okay, kyunke you have to lift your leg to go up the step. Now, for the second step, the difference is large. So you cannot go, go into lift the leg to a greater extent. Okay, because you require more amount of energy. And there is another possibility that you can just lose your balance and you can fall off. Isli aap kya karoge? Step by step chad hoge. ठीक है ये हो गया फर्स्ट केस सेकंड केस में कि जहां पर दो स्टेप्स के बीच में जो अंतर है जो डिफरेंस है वो काफी कम है तो इस सिचुएशन में क्या करोगे आप कि आप तो पैर तो लिफ्ट करने ही वाले हो टू गो फॉर वन स्टेप अब जितना पैर आपने लिफ्ट किया हुआ है उससे अगर थोड़ा सा ज्यादा लिफ्ट किया आपने तो दूसरा स्टेप भी आ जाएगा बिकॉज़ द डिस्टेंस द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द टू स्टेप्स इज लेस इसका मतलब क्या हो गया आप दो दो स्टेप एक साथ जा सकते हो all right, in the second case, because the difference between the two steps is less. So therefore, the amount of energy which you require is not so large enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess you are getting it what I want to convey to you with respect to this. Second case, yeah, that the difference between the two steps is less. So, it's ka matlab, thoda sa agar extra energy aapne diya, to aap do do step ek saath chad sakte ho, to aisa hi kuch idhar bhi hai, dosto. The energy difference between the 4S and the 3D is what? Less. So, whatever energy that we give to remove the two electrons from 4S, if I supply a slightly extra energy, then the electron from the 3D will be also removed. So, it's not that we require a very large amount of energy and therefore it is not favorable. ठीक है तो ये पहला पॉइंट हो गया दूसरा पॉइंट क्या है फायदे वाला पॉइंट क्या है व्हाट इज द मोर एडवांटेज ऑफ दिस इज एंड दैट इज माय डियर फ्रेंड्स यू नो दैट इन केमिस्ट्री वी ऑलवेज टॉक अबाउट बॉन्ड्स ओके देयर हैज टू बी अ बॉन्डिंग फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल द बॉन्डिंग बिटवीन द टीचर एंड द स्टूडेंट ओके इफ देयर इज अ गुड बॉन्डिंग देन आई गेस द केमिस्ट्री बिकम्स सो वेरी इजी ओके फॉर द स्टूडेंट्स टू लर्न ओके सो यहां पर भी केमिस्ट्री की बात करें तो इट्स अ फोर्स ऑफ अट्रैक्शन फोर्स ऑफ अट्रैक्शन इज बॉन्ड and when you talk about bond, obviously we talk about electrons. Okay, and electrons are present where in the orbitals. Okay, this sequence is pure. So if more number of orbitals are involved, so that means more number of electrons are involved in bonding, and therefore the bonding becomes stronger. Okay, and bonding becomes stronger, so that means it becomes stable, and this is what our priority is. Stability is our priority. All right, my dear friends. All right. So when I am going to consider not only electrons from 4s okay in addition to that i'm going to consider the electrons from 3d so the number of electrons available for bonding is going to be more so the extent of bonding increases extent of attractivity increases extent of stability increases extent of strength increases and what more you require in chemistry are you understanding this so this is the advantage of 
इनकॉर्पोरेटिंग 3D डी अलॉन्ग विद फोर एस इसलिए आप देख सकते हो सब जगह मैंने दो दो ऑर्बिटल शामिल किया है फोर एस एज वेल एज थ्री डी ओके तो मुझे लगता है कि ये कंसेप्ट आपको बहुत क्लियर हो गया कि वाई आर वी इनकॉर्पोरेटिंग थ्री डी अलॉन्ग विद फोर एस ठीक है ना कमिंग टू द नेक्स्ट पार्ट एस एस आई से आर प्राइम ऑब्जेक्टिव इज स्टेबिलिटी स्ट्रेंथ तो विद दैट रिस्पेक्ट देर इज सम चेंजेस इन द इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कॉन्फिग्रेशन ऑल्सो Now, when you talk about electronic configuration and when you talk about stability, the first thing which comes into our mind very easily, and that is octet. Octet means eight electrons in the outer motion. Or what eight number? कहाँ से आया? It's not a lucky number. Oh, it looks nice. Eight. Oh, wow. So okay, we start taking it. No. Okay, there is some reason, and that reason is that at the time when the octet tool was being forwarded, majority of the elements were S block as well as P block. So what is the capacity of the S and the P? Two plus six. How much it is? Oh yes, it's eight. So that way the octet rule came into picture. So it was being said that eight electrons are there. Okay, so it is stable. But then here we talk about d orbitals, whose maximum capacity is ten. So do we say that all those elements who do not have a octet are all unstable? No. Okay, it's not like that. There are many other exceptional cases. So we go for extra stability rules. अब दोस्तों वो एक्स्ट्रा स्टेबिलिटी रूल क्या है और वो ये है दोस्तों दो है उसमें नंबर एक अगर ऑप्टेड नहीं है तो चलेगा लेकिन इफ द आउटर मोस्ट ऑर्बिटल ओके और द ऑर्बिटल विच आर इन्वॉल्व इन दिस वेल इन शेल ओके आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड द कंसिडरेशन ऑफ द ऑर्बिटल्स टू बी कंसिडर्ड एज द वेल इन शेल सो द ऑर्बिटल्स विच आर अंडर कंसिडरेशन ओके हैज टू बी आई दर कंप्लीटली फिल्ड और इट हैज टू बी हाफ फिल्ड Okay, so even if there is no octet, but then if it is going to satisfy either of these criteria, either of the criteria under which one, either completely filled or half filled, then also it is going to be what stable. So now the orbitals which are there, okay, which is being taken into consideration over here, are which one? The s and the d. Now, जब s की बात करते हैं दोस्तों, s का maximum capacity is two. And when I have the s, the capacity is two, so that means there are only two possibilities. Either we have S one or we have S two. दो ही possibility है मेरे पास. Okay. Now two is the maximum capacity. तो उसका half करो तो one. So S one is stable because it is half filled. And S two मतलब it is completely filled, so it is stable. यानी कोई भी situation में हम बात करेंगे S के बारे में तो वो हमेशा stable ही होता है. इसलिए तो याद रखिएगा वो S सब S S याद रखो. S orbital. S for strong, S for sigma, S for strength. ये ऐसे याद रखो S S S S. अब बात करेंगे d orbital के बारे में. d orbital maximum capacity is what ten. So make it half of that, it's five. So that means if I want to consider stability with respect to d orbital, that means there are two possibilities, either d five or d ten. So come on, please come over here towards chromium. What happens is that one of the electron from four S goes to a three D. One of the electron, and as a result of which the configuration that I get is 4s1 and 3d5. So, so what will happen because of this transfer? What will happen? Why the transfer is possible? I already told you energy difference. Yeah, that's right, na? Yes, energy difference is what less. ठीक है वो पहला रीजन है दूसरा रीजन क्या है वन इलेक्ट्रॉन इस ट्रांसफर तो वन इलेक्ट्रॉन ट्रांसफर होने के बाद का इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कॉन्फ़िगरेशन देखो और कंपेयर करो दोस्तों बिटवीन दिस एंड दिस ये कंपैरिसन करो एस के ऊपर ध्यान मत दो वो पहले भी स्टेबल बाद में भी स्टेबल डी के ऊपर ध्यान दो इट वाज डी फोर एंड डी फाइव व्हिच इज मोर स्टेबल यस इट्स डी फाइव इज मोर स्टेबल सो बिकॉज ऑफ दिस ट्रांसफर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन स्टेबिलिटी इज अचीव्ड एंड द प्रायोरिटी इज वॉट स्टेबिलिटी आई होप यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस वेरी वेल राइट सो फॉर ग्रेटर स्टेबिलिटी वन इलेक्ट्रॉन गेट ट्रांसफर टू थ्री ओके Energy difference is less. One electron is transferred, okay, and because of that, stability is achieved, and therefore this particular process is possible. Okay, understood this? Now, मुझे लग रहा है कि as I said, now I can read, okay, your minds. What is the question going on in your mind? And that is, you must be saying that sir, why not four s का ये दोनों इलेक्ट्रॉन इधर चला गया, four s zero हो गया, and three d five. तो वो भी तो stable होगा. लेकिन माय डियर फ्रेंड्स हाउ मेनी इलेक्ट्रॉन्स हैज टू बी ट्रांसफर टू इलेक्ट्रॉन्स हैज टू बी ट्रांसफर सो इट्स अ वेरी सिंपल कैलकुलेशन इफ द अमाउंट ऑफ एनर्जी रिक्वायर्ड टू ट्रांसफर दिस वन इलेक्ट्रॉन इज एक्स सो हियर द अमाउंट ऑफ एनर्जी व्हिच आर रिक्वायर्ड विल बी से 2x एट लीस्ट डबल 
कम से कम तो डबल होगा और राइट सो मोर अमाउंट ऑफ एनर्जी इज रिक्वायर्ड एंड इफ मोर अमाउंट ऑफ द एनर्जी इज रिक्वायर्ड ऑब्वियसली थर्मोडायनामिकली इट इज नॉट फिजिबल इसलिए द ट्रांजिशन ओनली टेक्स प्लेस इन केस ऑफ क्रोमियम द ट्रांसफर ऑलवेज टेक्स प्लेस ओनली इन क्रोमियम नॉट इन वेनेडियम वेनेडियम का ऐसा ही रहेगा आई बात समझ में एट द सेम थिंग नाउ यू जस्ट गो डाउन नाउ प्लीज आई कम टू कॉपर वैसे ही होगा सेम One electron gets transferred over here, so as a result of which, what am I going to get? 4s1 and 3d10. Okay, so now what will happen is 3d gets completely filled and therefore it is stable. So for extra stability, there is a difference in the electronic configuration for chromium and copper. उसको हम anomalous electronic configuration भी बोलते हैं. Anomalous मतलब क्या? जरा हट के. वो हटके क्यों हैं? Forces पे तो ध्यान दो. क्रोमियम और कॉपर को छोड़के ऑल दी एलिमेंट्स ओके हैव टू इलेक्ट्रॉन्स इन द वर्स ऑर्बिटल एक्सेप्ट फॉर वॉट क्रोमियम एस वेल एस कॉपर ओके क्रोमियम एंड कॉपर एस वन वन इलेक्ट्रॉन इन द वर्स ऑर्बिटल ओके सो दैट इज व्हाट द डिफरेंसेस ओके सो आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड दिस आल्सो वेरी वेल ओके � or oxidation state must contain incompletely filled d orbital that means d1 से d9 okay this is what has to be considered ये transition elements का definition है I have already explained you this in part one okay if you have missed out once again I repeat go through the description box you will find the link of that transition element part one you can go through it and then see this video then you will understand this better okay please keep a continuity all right so understanding becomes very easy so in that I told you that either in the atomic state what do you mean by atomic state state of an atom an atom is what neutral so all these is an atomic state because everywhere see this okay these are neutral species I haven't shown any charges तो ये पूरा का पूरा जो भी इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कॉन्फ़िगरेशन है वो कौन सा एटॉमिक स्टेट वाला है ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट आप जानते हो चार्ज से तो चार्ज क्या दिखाएगा पॉजिटिव क्योंकि ये सारे मेटल्स हैं तो या तो एटॉमिक स्टेट या तो ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट में अगर ये एलिमेंट्स का इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कॉन्फ़िगरेशन इस रेंज में है कहीं पर भी डी वन टू डी नाइन तो हम उस एलिमेंट को क्या बोलेंगे ट्रांजिशन एलिमेंट है अब बात करते हैं हम जिंक के बारे में जिंक का एटॉमिक स्टेट देखिए थ्री डी टेन अब जिंक एक ही चार्ज दिखाता है दोस्तों और वो कौन सा है टू प्लस सो इट इज गोइंग टू लूज टू इलेक्ट्रॉन्स लॉस ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन ऑलवेज स्टार्ट्स फ्रॉम द आउटर मोशन तो टू इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर लॉस्ट फ्रॉम द फोर एस बिकॉज इट इज द आउटर मोस्ट तो व्हाट रिमेंस इज थ्री डी टेन तो दोस्तों ये क्या हो गया उसका ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट तो अगर आप देखो ये उसका एटॉमिक स्टेट हो गया ये आपका ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट हो गया जिंक का और दोनों स्टेट में द डी ऑर्बिटल इज कंप्लीटली फिल्ड सो इट डजन कम इन टू दिस क्राइटेरिया and therefore what is the conclusion my dear friends that zinc is not a transition element understood this kya aega conclusion zinc is not a transition element yes usko jo tiswa electron hai ye dekho ye 29 tak idhar tha and then the 30th electron goes into what 3d orbital so uska jo 30th electron hai the last electron goes into the d orbital and therefore it is a d block element but it is not a transition element Okay, whereas all the others are transition elements. Abhi hang on. Okay, once again I can read your mind. You will say, sir, why not copper then? Copper dekho 4s1, 3d10 hai. To atomic state hai ye. Okay, you said this is favorable. So it is d10, so it doesn't fit up into this. So therefore copper bhi nahi hona chahiye transition element. Lekin please, pura concept samajhne ki koshish karo. Okay, aadha padhte ho na, to gar padho chahiye. Okay, see what I have written is either atomic state or oxidation state. Copper is a very important charge, friends, and that is plus two. You have done this in your laboratory also. Okay, blue colored salt. Okay, semi micro analysis. So in that, what happens is if the two electrons have to be lost from this configuration, ये configuration में से अगर मुझे दो electron निकालने का है तो कैसे निकलेगा? एक electron from 4s and the second electron from 3d. And when the second electron is removed from the 3D, what do you get? Come on. Yes, D9. And D9 means it comes into transition elements. So copper is a transition element because it shows a charge of plus 2. Yes, it shows a charge of plus 1 as well. Okay, but in plus 2 charge, it comes into which category? Transition element. And these are the other elements you can see in the atomic state. Okay, they have incompletely filled the orbital and therefore they are obviously what? Transition element. Also, the last electron enters into the d orbital. That's why it's a d block element. So, from scandium to copper, 
okay they are transition elements as well as d block elements like in when i talk about zinc zinc is only a d block element it is not a transition element okay but like in thoda sa See, uh, properties may similarities hai, and that's why it is a part of this series like in truly speaking according to the definition part zinc we just call it as a d block element okay whereas scandium to copper we call it as a transition element okay strictly speaking technically speaking as per the definition so this was my purpose in this particular video and that is on the basis of the electronic configuration it's a very fine difference okay between the transition element as well as what d block element which i wanted to make you clear so i had to do it on the basis of electronic configuration okay so i have you the electronic configuration and after that i have told you the zinc ka example leke ke kaise zinc ko hum sirf d block bolenge usko transition element hum hamesha nahi bolenge ha usko usme series mein dala zarur hai okay try to understand this zinc is a part of that series all right Okay, they say lanthanum or actinum may be hota hai sa, okay, they are actually not the F block elements, but they, they are in, introduced into that because of some similarities in properties. Okay, so the position is related to the similarity in the properties. And here I am telling you the technical definition of zinc. Okay, that zinc is a D block element. It is not exactly technically a transition element. Whereas scandium to copper, they are D block element as well as transition elements. Alright, so I guess this concept is very clear to all of you all.